Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this presentation is titled Boeing Dodge the 380 Bullet. And by that, I mean the Airbus 380. Now, you're looking at this and you're going, Boeing never made that airplane. No, fortunately, they did not. This was actually uh, given in a presentation to my committee uh, back in 1995. And I'm talking about the new aircraft evaluation and certification committee that I was chairman of. And what Boeing did, you know, we um, looked at the various aircraft we were producing and we did test flights and stuff like that. But one thing they also uh, did was they told us kind of uh, what ideas they had for the future. And as a future idea, and look at the number of doors on that thing, uh, they had a double-decker just like the Airbus 380. Now, anytime you're going to build a large airplane like this, there's a lot of risk. Back when Boeing decided to build the 747, which was a big airplane at the time, they weren't really sure if there really was a market for it. I mean, they, they did to the best of their ability determine it, and it was very um, well received. But if it hadn't have been, this was what they considered bet the company, because uh, Boeing could have gone out of business in that point if this would have been a flop. And the 380 for Airbus was, you know quite a flop. They didn't uh, make back their um, development costs uh, from the sales after they, they shut everything down. But, uh, you know, marketing people always put a good spin on, you know, say, well, we learned a lot of things that made the 350 a success. Yeah, they when they went to put the pieces of the 380 together, the wiring harnesses were about two feet short. So, yeah, if somebody would have been done their job, you wouldn't have to have learned that you had this this big error. So if you want to put that spin on it, man, you marketing people are great, I'll tell you. But let's talk about uh, Boeing and their uh, thoughts about the next large aircraft or the new large aircraft or the NLA. Now, it's back in 95. They actually thought that there was a pretty good market. Of course, forecast market markets don't always come to fruition. And of course, this is looking 18 years into the future, which uh, is always very difficult. But they did a good analysis. Uh, you know, there were routes that you could use a large airplane on because a lot of people uh, went between these routes. And they produced slides with a lot of options. You know, what can we look at? What is Airbus looking at? what new large airplane family we would be looking at, you know, and, and look it up there in the chart. They have an initial one, and then they even stretch that thing. And, of course, they compare it to other aircraft and other stretching and, and other things uh, that they can do, uh, like the 747-500X or the 747-600X. And, of course, the slide shows that there is just nothing comparable to the class of aircraft as far as seats that they want to build. And here's how the 74600X might look like. And the one thing on on these uh, these airplanes and these companies, all of the major manufacturers, they all have a big what if situation or section. These are the people who sit there and think, well, what will the new airplane be? What will the next airplane be? And You know, it, I think it would be kind of frustrating as an engineer to put all these studies together. I mean, it's something you have to do. You have to determine, you know, what could be developed. So you have to put these studies together, but very few of them come to fruition. And here would be the general arrangement if you had a 747-600. And this is what a 747-500X would look like. And then, of course, you're doing range comparisons for various de derivatives and, uh, you know, the, ex the uh, extended range that you would get. You'd need, a, uh, you knew a, you'd need a 500X to get you to Sydney, you know, but uh, the other airplanes would get you in, uh, it would get you closer places. And then, of course, you can do an economic comparison uh, between the various models. This is the baseline for the new large airplane, talking about, you know, you'd use 777 engines, you'd have a composite empennage, you'd use 777 uh, systems and structures in that technology level, etc. So it's giving you just a, a basic overview of the aircraft, 606 seats, 78050 nautical mile range. And this is a general 
uh, depiction of what that uh, baseline of the new large aircraft would look like compared to the 747. Of course, 747, uh, 400, the upper deck only goes back a short ways. And then there's more cross-section comparison between uh, how the, uh, the new large aircraft would look. And of course, the other one was ranged from Tokyo, uh, was ranged from Frankfurt. This is ranged from Tokyo, looking at your customers. And of course, it's 380. That's a neat airplane. We actually had a pay rate uh, at United Airlines for it if we would fly it. That got put in the contract, but uh, we never decided to uh, uh, take any of the aircrafts. And of course, their, um, their production run was unfortunately limited. But back in the day, McDonnell Douglas was looking at the same thing. This is before McDonnell Douglas and, and Boeing combined. They were looking at the MD-12. Uh, this got no interest from the, uh, the customers, and it was, uh, it was dead before it ever got off the ground. Of course, some of you might remember the Sonic Cruiser. Uh, for a while, they thought the Sonic Cruiser was going to compete with the 380. And, of course, my marketing comment to uh, uh, Mike Carricker, who's going to be the chief test pilot on the 787, the Sonic Cruiser, uh, was, you know, I'd, I'd rather um, get to the airport three hours early and not wait with uh, another 300 people in baggage claim for my bag. I thought that would be a good marketing thing, but of course this airplane uh, looks cool. That would have been fun to be the chief test pilot on this, but it never came to fruition. Of course, back in the day, and Ken, who I took the committee over, actually worked on this at Boeing with their version of the SST, but, you know, it never flew. And there are a lot of ideas out there, like the blended wing body. And I used to think, oh, nobody would like that because everybody likes looking out the window. Well, if you traveled on airliners recently, you see everybody pulls down the shades. They don't even watch the takeoff. I mean, my gosh, it's like you're in a in a uh, dark tube. I mean, it's bad enough being in a tube, but uh, when they pull down the shades and you don't even look outside, I mean, the days of enjoying the view going by, I guess, are gone. Everybody's got their head buried in their little... Uh, you know, device watching their movies and stuff like that. And yeah, that's good. It's entertaining and stuff. But uh, being a pilot, I still like looking outside. But, uh, you know, this may come about. And, of course, there have been several uh, iterations on what an airplane would look like. And, of course, these designs just go on forever and ever with all sorts of thoughts and enhancements and how we might make it better and... Uh, Remember the unducted fan when uh, they thought a, a turboprop kind of configuration with uh, a ton of blades would be better? Well, uh, because of uh, fuel costs and that. Well, it can be interesting to look at all the what-ifs in aircraft design and the airplanes that come to fruition and the airplanes that don't. And that's a little brief history on kind of what Boeing's ideas were back, way back in 1995. And they made, uh, at the time, a very wise decision uh, to not go with a um, 380 competitor and ended up with the 787 essentially in place, which is, a, which is, a, which is an absolutely great airplane, especially from the uh, passenger standpoint. Thanks for watching.